this is uh, Morten from Inkish TV, and um, in this uh, webinar session with Learn With Us about Inkjet, uh, we are actually not going to talk to a vendor. We're going to talk to somebody who's actually using equipment. And uh, this time we are talking to Eileen from uh, um, a very interesting company in the UK. Uh, some may know of it, some may not, but that is, you know, the beauty of this session is that I think that we will get much more information about everything that you need to know. And uh, this episode is uh, sponsored by Canon because the, the, they have sold some really nice equipment to you, Eileen, isn't that correct? That's absolutely correct. And um, if I just explain a little bit about who I am and what I do. Um, that would be wonderful. I'm, yeah. OK, well, my name's Eileen Morrison and I'm responsible for trade book sales at Henry Ling. Henry Ling are a long established book printer binder based in Dorchester in Dorset. And they've been long established in the area of academic books and journals for quite some time, starting out with litho printing, then to moving on into digital printing, which has enabled us to produce short run books, POD, alongside traditional printing and binding, utilising our litho presses. Um, so it might be quite interesting for people to see things from a salesperson's point of view, if you like, given that I'm talking to publishers on a daily basis. So I think this might be quite a good spin on things for Canon and for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty certain about that. And I, I actually already like what you said, because I mean, having uh, 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 the view of also a salesperson is also sometimes, does this equipment actually bring value both to you as a salesperson yeah, and to the exactly. customer? So uh, I, I think that we will, we will have a wonderful session here. Um, Henry Ling, uh, is that, and I mean, because of people who don't know, is that a, a long time well-established company in the UK? Yes, it is. Um, they, they've been established for, um, a, must be about 140 years now, a family owned company started out in Dorchester, in the, in the town of Dorchester, and started out in commercial printing. So printing locally um, for um, local business people, then progressed over the years into litho printing. Then, obviously, alongside litho printing, needed to invest in bindery equipment. Mm -hmm. Over the years, it then um, moved into digital printing. Mm -hmm. So, very long established. The, the main market has been, up until now, books and journals for academic and education sector publishers. Um, but we, we now see that we can move into other markets as well, which mm. is where I come in looking at trade book sales. Mm. Uh, I, I can't help think about that uh, when you when you talk about uh, commercial print, I think that some people at least have a, an idea that commercial print is like everything from letterheads, business cards to books to magazines, journals, whatever. But but it seems that you have been focusing quite a lot on, on the books and from here you're extending into new offerings. Is that correct? Understood? <laughs> That, that's right. And um, commercial printing, it is an all encompassing expression, to be quite honest, and it can, it can cover everything from business cards, uh, right through to um, book printing. And I think a lot of book suppliers would still deem themselves as, as commercial printers. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, so we, we, we did start out in the more commercial type products as, as you would know it but then progressed into books and journals mm -hmm. I, I couldn't help think about because i mean um uh, i'm i'm a big fan of books you can see i have both books uh, and magazines in my, good. yeah good to see. yeah and i have i you know i'm i'm actually uh, i i once because i travel a lot try to to buy a uh, uh, some kind of uh, electronic books and it doesn't work for me to be honest so <laughs> well that's that's really good to hear morton <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was just thinking that uh, that if you look at uh, at, at uh, the how everything is is uh, progressing in uh, in all markets, I, I I was wondering because if you go from a uh, being an established uh, book printer in in a commercial litho offset uh, print space, uh, I take that you come from a from a time of period where it was larger print runs and uh, uh, fewer variables and, and these kind of things that is that is also what you have experienced in the past or and, and, and or yeah absolutely um without doubt the market has changed over the last couple of years and i think that's really consumer led it's, it's with the advent of things like amazon everybody wants everything yesterday oh yeah so where previously people might publishers might choose to to print a, a longer run length store books and warehouses for call off to retailers it's very much now that everybody wants books 
a lot quicker. They don't want to have to pay for warehouse storage. So there's a, a much higher demand for shorter run books mm. and definitely i've i've seen myself over the last couple of years that publishers might not necessarily increase their print volumes as such or the the units that they place with the supplier but they will break that down over smaller orders over the course of a year mm. um and i think suppliers have had to react to that which is where we move into the digital mm. area because mm. digital printing is is actually much better place to to do that than litho which is more suited to longer print runs yeah um, so uh, I, I don't i don't question that at all of course and we are going to talk about digital i'm just trying to mm -hmm. understand the market space uh, a little bit first because when you say that for example the change in uh, in your customer's behavior of buying print mm -hmm. would you say that also uh, when you now have the opportunity with digital to actually have maybe faster turnaround time uh, smaller volumes and all these kinds of things does that also open up opportunities Opportunities for publishers to bring in more titles because you don't have to to invest in in large quantities of books and and, and store them. So you can also take a, a maybe a more kind of risk in a, from a publisher's perspective or and even self publishers. So how do you see that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I absolutely agree that um, I mean particularly again with digital printing with inkjet printing. Mm -hmm where it was previously used for short runs it can now be used for publishers that might want to test the marketplace so where a publisher would have previously invested quite a lot of money and t taken a bit of a risk if you like mm. in the fact that they they will sell all of those books that are held in their warehouse they can now test the market by printing on the same papers that they would have done with a longer litho run mm -hmm. um, to see if the book will work And it could be that conversely, a very short run book would then move to a longer run mm. because yes, the book is going to take off in the marketplace. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's. It, I think having litho and digital really offers publishers a lot of flexibility, but digital printing is definitely reacting to the publisher's marketplace. So we're, we're reacting to consumer needs, if you like. Yeah, yeah. And and I can't help thinking about, because that, that is, uh, I think that is a, a trend we see in not only in the printing uh, industry, but also in other industries that is an, uh, uh, a greater demand for faster turnaround time, shorter print yeah. runs, uh, yes. maybe even uh, mass customization. And mm -hmm. um, before we, we go into a little bit more details also about your investment here, I, I'm wondering... Um, If you look at at what you just said, that the perfect mix is the combination of having digital and litho. Mm -hmm. w would you say that the reason why you choose, uh, maybe you can't answer that, but I'm asking anyway. Are you, yeah. are you, <laughs> I was I was wondering if 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 you when you choose a litho production versus a digital production, is that only based on cost of the of the of the of the total cost of producing or is it also about speed i mean because i i think that if you look at litho machines maybe they are still a bit faster if you have like long print runs or, or how how does that compare in, in your in your well, opinion it's it it does very much is that there's lots of variables come into into play when you're looking at how you're going to print a product but generally speaking litho presses are more suited to longer print runs yeah digital presses to shorter print runs um I think with regard to, to speed, um, yeah, digital can be a lot more flexible, can be a lot quicker. Mm. But obviously that you have to build those variables around what else is going on in the factory. Mm. But um, generally, I would say that if you're looking at higher print runs, litho comes into play. And then if you want to look at shorter print runs, that's where digital and inkjet really, really does um, sort of capture the market. Mm. When... Um When I was uh, working in a, in a printing company here in Denmark uh, many years ago, okay. <laughs> um, I remember that when we invested in that company I worked for, uh, they were a, uh, also a litho printer and then invested in um, in some digital. In that time, it was a toner-based device. And I remember, I remember when I was working in sales, I always had to go to the customer and say, yeah, you can have this one uh, that is a, a bit cheaper because it's a short print run, but it's digital. Or you can have this one that is offset and that is very high quality, but more expensive. But today, that is not even a question, is it? It's, um, well, again, there's, there are variables and it does depend on the actual product. Mm. With, with litho, the, I suppose the benefit with litho is that the higher the print run, the more your unit cost comes down because the main costs are incurred in all the setups. Mm. With digital, quite often the unit costs won't necessarily change a great deal over the, the 
the print life run, cycle yeah. Of, yeah. The, of the print run. Yeah. Um, but because you're not printing so many, it's it's really it's offsetting them both, mm. and and that's why to to sort of say yes, we would automatically print something live though. It, it, a lot of variables come into play. But the the reason I was asking was because yeah. I was just you know in the in when you started in the digital print space many years ago, mm. there was an obvious quality difference in digital and litho, and yes. today that is not really the case, is it? No, absolutely not. And um, probably shouldn't say this, but going back <laughs> a few years ago, inkjet wasn't my preferred um, printing method because I felt that inkjet wasn't comparable to litho. That has changed so dramatically mm. over the last couple of years, mm. and um, we'll go on to talk about the pro stream, obviously, in a in of a course. minute. Mm -hmm. But um, now, inkjet quality is very, very um, much on a par with with litho printing, and that was one of the obstacles in the past mm. to to looking more at the inkjet route yeah. was that not only was the quality of printing not quite up to to the same level as litho but also the choice of papers oh, that yeah. had to be treated yeah. to utilize an inkjet press that has changed as well so with the pro stream we can actually run the same papers that we run on our litho presses on the pro stream so that you've got um consistency if you like throughout the life cycle of a book Hmm. So, um, if I should conclude on what I've heard you say so far, yes. it sounds like uh, <laughs> the the market is definitely changing because the demands from both end users and publishers and and you know general general trends yeah. is, is in in yes. change right now. And with the investments you have done, you have um, and with the quality that is now delivered with the equipment you have, you can basically deliver on every measure that uh, your customer yeah. may, may ask, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had a color, um, a Canon color stream was installed. Um, I think it was back in 2013. I might be wrong. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, I was say, don't quote me on that. <laughs> but um, so that was serving our existing market of academic yeah. um, and education sector publishers. What we were looking for over, as we could see the market changing, and we were very happy with the colour stream that um, we'd purchased from Canon, had a great relationship with the Canon team, particularly with the team in Poeing. Mm. So with the service levels that we were offered with the Canon colour stream, we were then looking to progress into a higher end four colour press. Discussions obviously took place with with Canon, mm. and that's how we came about and being the first supplier to install the ProStream One Thousand mm -hmm. um, on site. But that has been a game changer because the quality is is just so good. Mm. We've already interestingly migrated some of our existing customers' work, so some of our academic and educational work and existing publishers moved onto the pro stream and customers have been absolutely delighted with the the quality as well mm. so it's, it's without a doubt it's opened up new markets mm. for us mm. and when you look at, at that combo of having a digital and litho in in the same yeah. company does that i mean i think it sounds like it complement each other very well do absolutely. you have is it also because your your litho is is a real base as well or is it because you uh, uh, how do you do the finishing um, we our litho press is the sheet fed, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, to complement that, we've got a bindery with extensive binding options through from notched perfect binding, sewn, um, saddle stitching, etc. So what we can do is offer a publisher the life cycle of a book, if you like. So if somebody came to me and I was talking to a publisher tomorrow and they wanted to print a thousand books. What we'd be able to do is print those live though and then follow the life cycle as a book of, of the book. So as the run lengths decrease, decrease as they want to, to place uh, reprints, moves onto the pro stream or the color stream and um, using the same papers. So they're getting consistency. And I think that was that was also something in the past, if you like, that you weren't able to offer the same papers. So if a publisher is selling a book, a consumer might buy a litho book, look at it, think this looks great. But if a reprint had to reprint at very short runs, you might not be able to offer the same, um, <clears throat> sorry, the same quality. Mm. So that's now consistent across the run lengths and across the printing methods. Mm. Um, 
I can't uh, can't help think about. Um, uh, I mean, um, obviously, uh, with all the things we talked about, and and you know, some, sometimes it sounds like a commercial when we're talking about digital in general, and, and that was not even the intention. Yeah. It was a learning thing. But but uh, what it sounds to me is is um, uh, all the options that we are talking about right now is also giving you. Uh, options to deliver, as we spoke about just a moment ago, uh, to your customers' need. Um, and I was just wondering, uh, these these technologies that are brought to, to, to market with the ProStream and, 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 and working with Canon, does that also open for entirely new applications seen from your perspective? Um, it, it definitely opens new markets from my perspective. Um, so again, if I was previously talking to a publisher about a four-color litho book, we didn't necessarily have the facilities to be able to replicate that for very short run inkjet. Now we can. Mm. So that that's really great. So from a trade book point of view, it's opened up that market. But the ProStream has also opened up other markets for us, so other commercial um, markets, sometimes outside of, uh, outside of the book market. But it's kind of early days at the moment, but um, it's definitely opened up. Mm. different markets for us mm. um, and uh, let's move into it so the Canon Pro Stream how long time have you had it in your in your print shop it's, it was installed um, last summer mm -hmm. so um, so you are a pa pandemic buyer <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah so no, not not um, you know not the best year but having said that in a way it was quite good that it enabled us to get the the machine embedded in if you like um and we were able to migrate as i mentioned earlier um some of our existing customers work onto it but it's it's up and running now and um going very very well and being well received i think that's the, that's the litmus test isn't it you can as a supplier you can speak highly about something or as a um from canon's point of view but ultimately the litmus test is how customers receive a product and feedback has been really good so for me as a salesperson out there in the industry that's what i want you know i need to know that um you know we, we've made the right investment and we absolutely have mm -hmm. and uh, and and the right investment is of course uh, one thing is that you deliver on on the on the time and the quality as you said and, and what is yeah. about i think that one of the things that people are wondering about if they're going to change from for example from litho to to digital mm -hmm. especially inkjet is that you know when you had a toner-based equipment it was often click-based so you knew your cost and i think that some yeah. people are a little concerned about inkjet because uh, ink is obviously more expensive than than yeah. uh, ink on a, on a litho press and and you sometimes when you get a print job you don't know in advance how much uh, page coverage you have is that something where you have experienced these kind of uh, yeah, challenges <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And the, the other um, beauty, if you like, with the ProStream is that we can quote a, a four colour job, for example, and it will always be on site of files. So when the files are delivered to us, we can then scan the files and the ProStream has the ability to read those files obviously convert it into dots for the, mm. the ink drops. And if the coverage, it, it, the coverage can actually be altered. Mm -hmm. So you can actually alter the amount of drops. So oh. it can all be done at repro stage. Oh. So that that is why, and I think this is, is quite interesting that quite often you can say mm. to publishers, we can quote on four color, mm. but if we have sight of the files, have a look at the ink coverage. It might be that um, it doesn't need quite such dense yeah. printing. Yeah. So that, that can all be addressed at repro stage and at, um, at file stage. Mm. So, so that, that is another benefit. Yeah. So, so from a business perspective, we, we set aside that the quality is, is uh, on par with the litho or maybe sometimes even better. And then uh, you have the shorter delivery time. And I mean, uh, what about the business side of it? I mean, because one thing is that you can, you can adjust things, for example, on the cost of the, of the ink when you are in, in the pre-press side of it. But, you know, it's it's also when the day is over. Is it is it worthwhile investing in? Uh, can you charge more for shorter print runs, or is it just something that where you can save cost, or how is that? Um, well, I, th I think you you again you do have to offset that with with litho. As I said, the the longer the print run, the more the unit cost comes down. Mm -hmm. You are still looking at click charges with mm -hmm. with the pro stream, but. Definitely in discussion with, with publishers, you can look at the pricing. And I think 
one of the main areas is if you're quoting for color it is really looking at the ink coverage yeah. so there are ways if for instance i created something tomorrow based on extensive four color ink coverage then the files came in and we deemed actually we can reduce that ink coverage costs can be adjusted accordingly mm. but, uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's not hugely black and white no no um, no today it's it's kind of cheaper to print digital or cheaper to print live though it's mm. it's there are so many variables mm. but i was uh, sorry to interrupt me Aline. it was mm. more because i was thinking that you know uh, and and may, maybe it's because it's uh, it's uh, less of your interest than because you are in sales but i was thinking that you know uh, i was i would assume that if let's say let's let's say that a life of book in thousand copies cost you three pounds right just as an example yeah, yeah. Uh, you could probably argue that if you buy 500 it will be four pounds per piece and you could probably argue that if you can send them one off then it might be eight pounds or whatever right and i was just wondering if that is also a business opportunity because i mean with, with, if if the publishers save on storage and they have more options of getting things delivered on demand maybe the entire uh, value chain and and how the monetization of a process is changed and i was just wondering if that's something that you experience when you work with sales Yes, absolutely. And and I think, again, with digital, sometimes it can, the unit cost can be higher per mm. book. Mm. But again, so many variables come into it for the, the publisher as well, that they need to to look and understand that they they print on demand, if you like. They're, they're printing yeah. the books they need. They're yeah. not printing 2,000 books and they might only sell 1,000. Yeah. Um, so that it very much does all it's all part and parcel of the decision and it's it's the decision that the publisher needs to make as well that they might look and think actually i can only afford this unit cost for this book we can offset our warehousing costs but if they want to minimize warehousing costs then definitely digital would be the, the route to go down shorter print runs you might have a, a higher outlay for the books but then you offset that against uh, your cost savings elsewhere mm. so it's it's all um i think with 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 printing and i think particularly in sales it's it's all very much part of a much bigger picture yeah. it's talking to the publisher understanding their needs talking internally um so that we can actually come up with the best solution for the publisher as well mm. we, we don't just decide to um kind of make a decision for them no but doesn't that also require changes in how you sell i mean because i mean if you have a sales of two thousand books you can quote one on one basis but sometimes if you have a you know a relationship with a publisher where sometimes they order 50 sometimes they order one sometimes they order ten thousand. i mean uh, the selling process does that change when you also have these opportunities in your company to, to a degree it does but um a publisher will know very much what they think will sell we we can point them in the direction if you're in discussion or in dialogue with the publisher who isn't sure about a particular book whether whether they should run a thousand what we can now offer is to take that risk away from them and mm. and run a shorter run length so it's, it's a little kind of a little bit um around the other way rather than going from life though down to short run go with the short run to start with, mm. test the market, mm. then they're not outlaying um, a lot of costs for books they might not sell. Yeah. But it's it's all very much in discussion with publishers um, and dis discussing each individual book with them. Mm. Sounds great. And... Um can't help think about again that uh, that uh, it's uh, it's a fantastic time to live in. I mean, uh, uh, as you said, as you said just a few years ago, uh, uh, inkjet was not really an option to replace litho, and and uh, and and toner based equipment was uh, maybe too expensive, too slow. Now we we are in uh, in some kind of a paradigm shift right now where it's actually something that can be uh, utilized and and to some extent replace litho. Where where do you think it will head in the future? I a very interesting one actually because uh, I, I think the jury's still out on that. But I I think with the huge technical advances that um, inkjet printers have made or inkjet suppliers have made, possibly it could do, go down the route of um, inkjet. And I, I think it's also again it's consumer led and it's publisher led or customer customer led that 
I think where everybody was used to, to litho in the past and litho quality, that is changing. And I think that perception, as I said, it was my perception as well mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Mine too. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, no, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think if, you, if you've worked in the industry for a while and you've always worked with litho, and particularly on the sales side, there, there was always that, oh, I don't know about inkjet. But it's just so amazing. And I think the quality now is just so good mm -hmm. that I can see a point where that's actually going to become the um, the preferred method of printing. Mm. It, Probably it, it, lots of litho press manufacturers out there might disagree, but I, I genuinely feel it's it's you know it's just so good. It's yeah. surprisingly good actually, yeah. and I've I've heard this from publishers that yeah. wow, yeah. you know we weren't expecting that. So it's, yeah. it's quite amazing what you're saying because I mean it's funny that you know if you are a, a litho press manufacturer and, and you think that this is a threat, that maybe this is actually an opportunity for everybody because I mean. You know, you had letter presses in the 60s and 70s, yes. and then you moved to offset yeah. presses. Now you're moving to the next next yeah. part of uh, of things, and that is just, I think, it's a great opportunity. And and uh, and I think that your story has, uh, has uh, probably is very good because this shows that the technology is on a level where customers are happily in buying the output of the machines. That is always the yes. the, the real test of uh, of, yes. uh, of of everything, right? Yes, absolutely. And from a sales perspective, as I said, it's, you know, I can have an opinion, Canon or any print manufacturer can, a press manufacturer can have an opinion, but ultimately it's the, the customer. Mm. And if the customer's feedback is, is good, then that, that proves that it's the correct investment and it's the correct route to go down. Mm. Perfect. Let's um, uh, the last round of the uh, last few minutes. We're going to talk here. I, I was yes, wondering. Yeah. Uh, we were introduced a couple of days ago from Canon Europe, who set up this uh, uh, this session with you and me, uh, and I, I think it's been fun so far. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was I was uh, I was just uh, just thinking uh, from a uh, from your chair. Um, um, how has uh, has also uh, a Canon? Given your inspiration and, and information that that you know benefits you in, in sales, or is that more that like the management and production that handle these kind of things in the in, the, in relationships? No, they they have been incredibly supportive, mm. and I think um, and again the team in Poing and in the UK have been very supportive mm. with regard to giving me information when I need it, mm. um, and that they've you know that they, they have got a great team there, but it's. Um, yeah, I think it's it's an ongoing process, so the mm. relationship is ongoing. Mm. But they've, um, yeah, they they have been incredibly helpful mm. to to me. Mm. The reason I'm asking is because what, what I always like when you know there was once a, one, once upon a time there was something called trade shows. <laughs> we all, we all remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the reason I'm, I am uh, I'm referring to this is that one of the things I really liked about trade shows is also the fact that you can go and pick up print samples and you can yeah. talk to yeah. you can see that okay this book was actually also bound in a new and a different yes. way and 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 uh, this uh, color space was really interesting and uh, these kind of things and I was just wondering in in this uh, in this uh, apparently world where we need to uh, to be more virtual uh, I was thinking that maybe they sent a good stuff over to you or made some good. Uh, um, inspiration because I mean one thing is to see what it what it can bring but it's also sometimes to challenge the technology I was thinking could be fun maybe yes yeah and I think at the moment we're we're doing a lot of work internally in in Henry Ling um, and you're quite right I, I miss trade shows but I also miss being able to meet people yeah and sit down face to face you know um, rather than virtually all the time take printed samples but what we're doing at Henry Ling we've we've actually um, we're just completing a really interesting process whereby we've run off a sample book oh. that shows the three technologies that we, we currently have so same <sighs> images yeah, yeah. litho printed printed on the pro stream and um, we we do have a an HP Indigo, mm -hmm. and it's really for publishers to look mm -hmm. at the same images, and I think particularly they're interested in seeing Litho compared to, to ProStream, mm -hmm. and this is where we're, we're getting that great feedback. Mm -hmm. Canon have also been very good and very instrumental and supportive in in supplying us with samples oh, as well. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's 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 um, where I would normally sit down with somebody. It's sending them information yeah. um but but 
with regard to challenging us at the moment, we're, we're very much printing books. Of course. It, we will definitely move into other markets as the opportunities arise. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, it, it is very exciting times. Still kind of early days for the pro stream at Henry Ling, but mm. um, yeah, very, very interesting times. Mm. Um Eileen, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you here in this session here. It's and, great uh, to talk to you, Morton. I hope, I hope you enjoyed. I mean, uh, uh, I think that uh, this is one of the few uh, pre-recorded sessions we're doing here at Learn With Us, but it also has its advantages because we are. I'm not as stressed as I would probably be if I was doing everything live, and maybe you, you as well, right? <laughs> well, sitting here in my little office and... <laughs> Just, just please that my cat didn't come in and interrupt us. But <laughs> uh, I think that in uh, uh, in about hundred interviews I've done online since the pandemic, I can't remember almost a single episode where we have not been disturbed by some kind of animal. So, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, Definitely, you stand out. He was he was instructive to, to stay where he was. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> but no, it's been great to talk to you, Morton. Likewise, and I I wish you the best with the the investment, of course. And uh, yes, thank I you hope, very much. Yeah, and I hope you will soon be back to normal times where we can, you know, uh, meet people and and show them the real yes. books and and uh, get advantages of all this, uh, what everything is about, basically human interaction, yeah. right? Absolutely, mm. and so, and the same with you. Th thank you. <laughs>